everybody, this is Leanne Alexander coming to you from United Pentecostal Church International Headquarters with another teacher training video. Now, in previous videos, we've talked about some specialized topics, ministering to students with disability. We've talked about things specific with our children, tips for adults, all kinds of details. I want to step back just a little bit in today's video and challenge us on the role of the teacher. Now that seems pretty basic. Many of you are a teacher because you've felt a special burden and calling in your life. Others of you, perhaps pastor just came to you and said, I need some help. In either case, teaching is a spiritual act. We've talked before in other videos about the biblical mandate from Matthew 28, 20 and other places in scripture that remind us of the priority of teaching in the church. But I do want to challenge us today to think about what teaching looks like in 2019 and beyond. I believe for a long time we've traditionally thought of the role as teacher primarily as the knowledge expert. Now let's, let's illustrate that. If we were to, to draw a, a good old pie graph here of what the teacher does, I really believe that we've probably defined that usually the teacher is the knowledge expert. We worry most about finding teachers who know a lot about the Bible. And naturally, we should know about the Bible we will teach from. So we recognize there's a value of that. But I think in the trade-off, probably what's happened is that we then think, well, next, we want a teacher who can communicate. And so we, we think about who can present information. In the adult class, that looks like who's a talented speaker, who is a, a good public speaker and they lecture well. Traditionally, perhaps that's what we've done. Maybe we've thought a little bit about the fact of then, well, the, the teacher should obviously connect with students. So maybe there's a point where we say, you know, is this someone who, who cares for the students and spends time with them? And maybe that just leaves us with a small chunk here where we say, well, there should be a spiritual aspect here, and, and we should think of a teacher as someone who has a strong spiritual life, and they're a person of prayer, and they will pray for the class. But my challenge with this model is that now in a Google world where as you're lecturing, there may be students on their phone Googling what you're saying, that's not meant to scare us, but the reality is we no longer have a corner on the market when it comes to knowledge. Even if we do, is that the best way to communicate and help others grow spiritually? Just by pushing information downstream and trusting them that mentally as they learn new information, that's going to result in spiritual growth as well. Look what we're sacrificing when we focus just on learning information to lecture to students. We're, we're sacrificing connecting with those students. And in a children's class, in a youth class, and even in an adult class, this is hugely important. You've heard the old cliches about does it, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. You've heard those sound bites, but there's truth there. If we focus on a teacher as just, I need to learn more, I need to learn more, while that's important, it may come at the cost of other things that are important. I believe we've got to connect with our students or it won't matter how much we know about the Bible. I believe we need to be people of prayer and make room for the spirit to move in our classrooms. Or again, none of this matters. So let me challenge us with a different, a different ratio of what teaching might look like for a class that is focused on not just lecturing information for students to learn more facts, but what would it look like if we think of the teacher as a coach to build spiritual growth in a group? All right, same circle. What are our ratios for our, for our teacher? I'm going to suggest to you that knowledge is just one part. Yes, we want to know the Word of God. Yes, we should study. I'm saying, though, that this is now a minimum standard. That should be a given. It should be an expectation if you're going to teach, you're going to study and learn the materials yourself and prepare. That should be a given. But I'm going to say then we need a bigger emphasis on our spiritual growth personally. Our students are gonna model what they see. We wanna be a leader in spiritual connection. We can have a move of the spirit in a teaching class. Maybe for too long we've pushed teaching and preaching apart at the expense of teaching. I'm not saying that every time we teach we should have a, a time of altar call where we pray for outpouring of the spirit and for someone new to be filled with the Holy Ghost. So that will happen in some classes. But I am saying we make time for a moment where there is prayer, where there is a move of the spirit. We don't box God into a certain way 
way he does that. But we make an opportunity for the spirit to cement what we've been discussing. And so God can speak to hearts. There should be a spiritual element to what we do as teachers. I'm also suggesting that this connect piece is a very, very big deal. We've got to build that relationship with our students. That means outside of class, I interact. That means when I see one of my students praying in the altar on Sunday night, when we're not having class, I'm there to make that connection, to work closely with them, and to help them grow in their spiritual lives and their spiritual development. That's a huge part. We're also going to spend a lot of time working on how to communicate in the class. Not just on thinking about what are the words I'm going to say as a one-way lecture, but I'm thinking about ways for our adults that I can coordinate a discussion. How am I going to communicate what I know in an atmosphere where we're going to interact so people can learn this information and not just learn the facts, but internalize truths that they've talked through, that they've thought through, that they've been, they had an opportunity to ask questions about. That's going to be very important here. And then I'm going to reserve some extra space here for other things that will be important in, in teaching in this new era. And it may be that we, we use this as, maybe this is some research, maybe this is personal development, maybe this is investment in the life of the whole church body so our, our class is not standalone. But you can see the point is I'm breaking, this, I'm breaking this model up and the way we go about developing and training as a teacher is not just focusing it more on, I wanna learn more things, that's fine, but that's one part of a much bigger circle I'm suggesting for us. As teachers, I need to be focusing on my spiritual growth. I need to become comfortable leading my class in a time of prayer, in a time of seeking the Lord to speak to us about what we've just discussed in our class. I especially need to work on developing connections with all of the students in my class coming into class, going out of class, outside of class. I'm building relationships so my students are ready to receive what we're discussing. And I'm thinking about communicating as a teacher in ways beyond a lecture, in ways that will be interactive and that will encourage everyone to talk through what we're learning so we can really retain this information more effectively. We could do some disclaimers here, but the point is, as teachers, we wanna think through all of these aspects of our personal development so we can have the best class possible. So I hope with this video, you're challenged to think about how you're going about preparing as a teacher and what you can do to have a healthier, more interactive class. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to connect with us at Pentecostal Publishing House. Thanks and tune in for more training videos soon.